Thank you for watching another episode of what we're doing here at the Ocean Sea Aquaculture Coral Research Laboratory. All of it. It's all good. Keep on reefing, baby. Woo! All right, we got Chris. We got Scott here. The OSA Aquaculture Facility. What's going on right now, guys? This is our first shipment of corals that we have uh, decided to put into the farm. These are farmed corals from ACI Aquaculture. So what better than to put farmed corals into the farm for the first time. So good hardy lineage species here. Um, stuff that will make it through the, the swings and the parameters and the stuff that we talk about, like you know how corals sometimes um, will be more sensitive to certain things. Corals that have been through it all already are what you want. So something that's growing for, you know, years probably some of these and some of them for a decade um, are definitely some of the hardier species so good testers for the farm but also stuff that we know is going to grow fast and we can produce for other people in the long run how excited are you scott crow i am so excited and i'm so wet so oh, crazy like i don't even understand how this even happens like ah oh. <laughs> <laughs> i can't we also look at this this is just out of control <laughs> Ready, Chris? Yeah. And go. So the first rack of corals has been completed. We just put all these guys away. We checked them. They're all nice and clean. Uh, took off a couple of um, little, uh, what do they call them, uh, verminid snails off of there. But the normal, and they're looking pretty cool. We got some really cool frags here, some good lineage stuff that's been around for a while, and some stuff that ACI named themselves. Some really cool things. So we're going to take this rack. This is what's nice about these interchangeable racks here. We can fit three racks, and we'll put it right in front of the flow over here. Three weeks later. Hey, what's happening, folks? Welcome back to another episode on Ocean Aquatics TV. A little farm vlog today as I wait for Chris to come back over from the shop with some glue. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of fragging today at the farm. Um, I'm not sure what he's going to frag, but we got a whole bunch of stuff that he's chopping up. So uh, stick with it, stay tuned, and uh, let's get into this. Oh, oh. Hey, folks. If you didn't see the last video, we did a little uh, farm vlog where we installed uh, all the protein skimmers. Um, they're working really, really, really great. Coral Box Cloud Nines from Logan. And uh, check out these. Look at these. Chris, what do you think about these? I think it's pretty sick. Like, look at the arm. Like, what do you think? I think the new hoodies. This is the Check most them important out. part. Yes. OSA aquaculture down this arm. Woo! Our latitude and longitude down this arm. And then our big move on the back. I think they're awesome. So sick. So sick. So today, the coral farm, we're going to be doing some fragging. And I'm going to show you a couple different kinds of corals. Some stuff that we've had grown out for a while. And stuff that some friends of mine have grown out for a while. So, in the beginning, we got all our supplies out. We got a... Uh, these two little tools here, you got your curved shape snips and then your bone cutters for a little bit thicker stuff. Scalpel, always handy, doing it especially. Uh, got some glue, some accelerator to make that glue dry faster, which is nice. Two different kinds of glue, depending if I want to be more liquidy or a little bit more viscous. And then I even got some epoxy. I don't use it that much. A lot of people like the epoxy method, not my style. I like the glue, go quick. Assortment of frag plugs, small. You got black and, black and white ones here, so I could do two different kinds of corals, larger size. And then we got the squares, and then we also have a bunch of discs underneath too. We got a couple thousand plugs, so I think we got plenty of those. Yeah, plenty of plugs. Laid it all out ahead of time. Um, I keep uh, frags, I frag, and then I do one of these little guys, so I put some water in here, and I can let the frags sit in the water to dry. And a nice little rack that I just had made for that. Then I take that out and bring it over to the tank, put them in the water, so I'll show you guys how I do all that. And of course, my favorite tool, the Gripon bandsaw. I'm a bandsaw bandit, so I gotta have a couple of these laying around. Let me tell you, he's not joking. I trip over them like all the time. They end up in the freshwater section, like in the back room. It's like, oh, there's a bandsaw again. He's the bandsaw bandit. He just leaves them lying around everywhere. It's ridiculous. So, got one, I got a spare one, got some extra blades just in case we snap one or something today, but hopefully we don't do anything crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, excited, we got a bunch of different things to frag, show you guys exactly what we do and how we propagate stuff for the farm. So, let's go Ooh. to it. Joe, where are you going? I gotta use the bathroom. Right, hurry up, far, hurry okay? up. Oh my God. No. See what I mean? They lay around everywhere. 
That needs to get fixed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks like I'm going outside. <laughs> so here at the Cool Farm, we started the very first frags in here with some frags from ACI Aquaculture. So why not start the farm with some farm corals? A lot of the other corals that we brought into here are stuff that we've grown at Ocean State Aquatics in the in the store tanks. Um, they were for sale, but really they were trying to keep them growing out as they were for sale. There was really no designated area. Eventually we made a little not for sale section, and that was our start of some propagation that we had. Um, some of those corals also came from places like Eye Catching Corals and um, a couple other wholesalers that we, we buy from, and we just decided like it's a really cool piece, let it grow out frag it into quarters, sell another one of them, keep a couple of them, and just keep doing it like that. Now we get to do that on a massive scale. We get to make um, frags and frags and frags until we reach like a couple hundred or even 300, 400 frags of the same exact coral so that we can have a steady supply of those for all our customers, for the store, for anybody that wants to buy wholesale, we can have all these things available to them at all times. One thing we focused on um, when we started the farm was most of the corals that we're starting the farm with is all grown right here in New England. Being that we're New England's first coral farm that I'm aware of on this massive of a scale, it was important to kind of keep the lineages around here and say that, you know, this is something that started here or something that somebody bought and grew in their tank for four or five years before it made it here. So we did a lot of that. Uh, what we're seeing here in this vat here is a friend of mine, Mike. He is going to be moving, so he decided he wanted to sell off his corals. So I said, let me just buy all of it. He bought a lot of these corals from me at Ocean State Aquatics. So I was like, these are kind of things that I wanted to get back. So a couple chalices that he grew out at. We actually had the chalice growing at the store. I brought it to the farm and now I have another couple pieces of that. So we're gonna show Frag in that. Um, I also have some Monty caps that he's been growing in his tank for half of a decade. So it's just really cool to see that kind of stuff that's been around and it's hardy. And that's what we focus on starting this. So uh, first thing we're gonna Frag today, make it nice and easy, is Monty caps. Uh, we're making these into smaller frags in order to keep them propagated for a long time. So we have some starburst cap and that'll be the first thing that we do today. It's a red cap with orange polyps. It's one that I don't have here at the farm yet. So we're gonna cut these guys up and I'll show you guys our techniques for doing this. So we got these couple pieces of Monty cap in here and it doesn't matter exactly what size frags I make. I wanna have some that are medium size to large that I could let heal for a couple weeks and then sell those right away. And then we wanna do some that are really small, micro fragging. We'll let those grow out. And when those ones grow out, we'll frag them in half again. And we'll keep doing this repetitively. But having a couple of them for sale over at the store is definitely important. We definitely gotta keep some stock you know, flowing and then some stuff growing. So with these, we're just gonna start, take these bone cutters here and just make a couple cuts off this part. We're gonna keep the base piece, it's a little bit more solid. I'm not gonna cut through that. That's a nice piece, we'll keep that one. And we'll take these, and no real science to this, we'll make the little wedges just like this. They don't have to be any perfect shape right now. There we go. Very easy to break these. They do like to get a little slimy, so we, Cut them, put them in the water, and we'll let them rinse off in there before we start gluing them to plugs. So we'll get them all done. All our frags are cut. While they sit in this container getting ready for the frag plugs, I'm gonna have this as where they all sit after the frag is done. So this is just a Google solution, iodine dip. Um, really good for healing properties after you frag your coral. This is usually 40 drops per gallon. It's about a half a gallon, we like 20 drops. So we got all our right. dip. So what I'm gonna do is start gluing some of these guys down onto here. Start with the sea cam glue. Just a little bit is all we need here. So, a little dab of glue. Oh, to the down. plug. And there's a little guy. Make sure that glue kind of gets smeared around a little bit too. Chris, people might in the comment section ask, yes. is it okay for the corals to be out like this? Yes, so this is actually gonna allow the glue a little bit of drying time also. Um, sometimes when you put it under too fast, it wants to fall off the plug. Um, just being that the corals are a little bit wet and that glue, it binds it really quickly. Um, corals out of the water at low tide for hours sometimes, certain ones. Um, some corals you don't wanna leave out too long, especially stuff like torches. If they have their 
flesh hanging off the skeleton, you want it to be closed up. But SPS corals tend to be just fine being out of the water for the time that it takes me to glue and put in the dip. If you're uh, not as fast and it's going to take you a little while to get all your things done, so maybe glue five or ten frags, put them in the dip, get those in the tank, and then go back and glue a couple more. This piece here, Joe was asking me, I think that'll come back. And this is just the shadowed out part of the Monty cap. Montes, as they grow, they scroll and they end up getting a little bit more. So we give every coral a chance. This is just a little bit of bleached out flesh. So we'll give it a shot. Worst case, it doesn't make it, but I think it will recover and get some good red color to it. It's the good part about having the farm here. Just let that stuff sit there for two, three, a week, a month, you know. You never know how long it'll take. And um, see how it, how it looks in, in that amount of time. So we turned that one colony into 81 frags. 81 frags. It's pretty good. It's a lot of coral. Yeah, good start. As you can see, we were talking about giving every coral a chance. We got some of the pink ones, so we'll see how those do. But we also took the little chips and put a couple chips on each one. And actually, in reality, when this one grows out, it's just going to be one flat cap. When these start healing up and growing, those little pieces, it should start being a cooler shape right away. It'll take longer to grow out but in the long run, that will actually probably look a lot cooler once it grows into a, another kind of frag. So it's very interesting. Pretty thing. awesome with all that eye candy. It's so red. Uh, all right, what coral's next? Next one we're gonna do is a bird's nest. Bird's nest, baby. So this is a green bird's nest. Look at that. It's a nice piece. This is something that we can definitely farm and make a lot of frags out of, but also keep growing for a very long time because it grows so fast. And this came out of that... Um, also Mike's tank, yep. I'm not sure how long you had this growing for, but it, quite a while. Yeah, it's a big colony. So with this, I like the curved ones. Um, you get into the little areas where you want to snip from. Um, instead of the big bulky guys, it's harder to get in. We'll probably end up using these on the thicker stalks down below. But to start, we'll start off with these. So the technique with this, really, you don't have to squeeze very hard. You just pinch and then give it a little bit of a twist, I call it. It just snaps off right there. A lot of times, um, a lot of people squeeze too hard, and if you just squeeze the frag, if I just go like this, see how it shoots? So, you can get it in the water at least, but a lot of times you're fragging it and it shoots across the room. So a lot of these delicate ones, just simply break it off right like that. So we pretty much have removed most of the colorful tips off of this, but that doesn't mean the rest of this is not still alive. All of this extra skin and flesh where you see polyps is still good, and even down those stalks into there. Not really anything dead till you get down to this dark color. So all this is still living, still salvageable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass this down the saw. I'm gonna make two colonies out of it and put those on the, the grow top. <laughs> like that two colonies yeah yeah oh. so for all these little tiny stalks we have these nice frag plugs that actually have little divots and holes built into them um, nice feature for when you're gluing this kind of stuff down so I just go along and put a little drop of glue in each one of these made a little faster process than gluing the bottom of each one look at the little Christmas trees a lot of little Christmas trees. You know what's funny is we can sell those little pieces more than an actual Christmas tree. <laughs> it's so true though. <laughs> Dinner is served. Call us now, buy your Christmas pack, coral Christmas packages. We could do from a bunch USA. of red and green corals together. <laughs> Available only at the Christmas party. Oh, that's Ooh, gonna be here at the farm. Yes. So, that's gonna be interesting. Oh. Hey, bud. I got you a present. Ah, oh, yes. Sea chem reflux. Looks like you needed some Best more. Best stuff on the planet right here. Favorite glue. Favorite glue? Favorite glue. They even saved the old cap. Got a nice collection of them over there, but keep using them. No mess cap. That's right. 
Boom, you're ready to go. Blue some mushrooms. Oh, so much better. I was fighting with that last one. Yeah, I know. You're welcome. You'll thank me later. It's good to the left drop. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so sometimes a coral gets kind of stung and, you know, you got to let it recover for uh, before you can sell it retail again. And it just happens when you have so many corals packed into a store like OSA. But instead of letting this one heal, I decided to do some experimenting. And it's a research laboratory after all. So sorry, Scott. We're going to frag this bleeding apple. It's pulling me up. Usually his mouth isn't even, but it's a good time to do it. It's nice and time to go. Time to cut. Time to cut. Let's do it. To the bandsaw. With the bandsaw band. I have done this before. This is not the first time I've fragged scolies. I've successfully done this. Um, I never propagated and cultured them. I fragged them and then they sat and they just looked really cool. Um, but I had done a different technique, so this one's gonna be a little bit new. So I'm gonna cut this down flat first down here. Then I'm gonna come one slice right across the mouth and let those heal before we propagate again. Hopefully I can keep these going. But this was the edge that got stung up. And then over here it was receding a little bit also. So we got a nice, the mouth goes horizontally this way. I find it easiest to go straight through right there. First step. Perfect. Go through there. Safety first. Got it is juvenile scolies fragged the best. Um, every other time I had fragged them, I had fragged a little bit larger than this, not full size. And I had just taken a piece out and then took a piece out of another scoli and then fused them back in. And it was really cool because you get two different kinds of scolies mixed together. And we just sold them like that. Really, they were just on display. But um, this time right here, we're gonna do this with the juvenile and see if we could keep this growing for a long period of time. So it's pretty cool as we realized the barnacle was in here. You know, we saw where we pulled that out of, we got that funky worm, but the hole comes right up and it comes through right here. That's the passage the barnacle is coming out of. And this is where the area of the scully was not doing so good. So he might've been being bothered by that. Um, usually it's not a case that they get bothered by something so simple, but you never know. That is a coincidence that that area was receded back. Yeah. All right, frag it up. Got an iodine dip ready for it. We'll in the place dip. it in there. Shake off some of that slime. We'll let them stay in there. And then we're gonna apply them onto one of our OSA tiles and I'll put them separate. Put one here and one over here. We'll uh, watch and see how those guys do. But that's how you frags go. Sweet. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna glue the mouth side facing down onto the tile, prevent any kind of loose flesh picking up. Um, any kind of infection is less likely to get into there. So just do some glue here, a little bit of glue on here. Along these, this is a not a perfectly flat tile, it's got the little things to it, so nothing should build up or anything. So do one there, like that. Grab our other frag. a little bit inwards and that's still in show that's actually how they naturally grow is vertically in the wild so uh it's pretty good like that let's Sweet. see how they do experiment number one of many, of many. <laughs> i'm gonna put him back in the same system water he was in before actually in the exact same spot that he came out of make him nice and happy grow good buddy Thanks for watching how we frag some corals at the coral farm, part number one. I'm sure we'll be doing a lot of this as time goes, uh, since this place has to be filled up with frags that or Scott is always whipping the rack, whipping the whip. Whipping the whip? He's cracking the whip. Cracking the whip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's always cracking the whip. Chris, make more frags, make more frags. So, yeah, we'll be making a lot of frags here, probably more demos, some more specific things, but I hope you enjoyed part number one. Uh, it was good to show you guys exactly what we're doing here. And, that aquaculture is the future, so this is a really good way to do it. Tune in, like, and subscribe, and keep following along. And as always, you know the drill. Keep on, keep reefing. on reefing, baby. Woo!
three weeks later. Guys, welcome back to another episode of OSHA Aquatics. We are at the farm again. Last time you saw us here, we were like standing like right here. And he had one, one frag saw. We did a bunch of fragging the first corals of the farm. This man has been here sleepless nights, okay? Fragging up. Now he's brought Justin in to this too. Pretty soon I bet you I'm gonna be fragging. Who knows? Freshwater scrub up in here. But anyway, <laughs> let's check out what Chris has done, the Bandsaw Bandit, to the coral farm. Cause there's just an absolute insane amount of corals here. So stay tuned guys. 